The relationship between 10-year yields and equities is complicated. Now, on the most basic fundamental analysis level, it would suggest that all things equal, stocks like low rates for two reasons. Lower yielding bonds become less attractive on a relative basis to stocks, and lowering borrowing costs for companies tend to make them that much more profitable. Unfortunately, it's not that easy of an analysis. When rates are moving lower, it's usually because the economy is slowing. Now, if you believe that the rate movement is signaling an extended slowdown, perhaps it's not the best time to buy stocks. Now, the current relationship between 10-year yields and the NASDAQ is pretty fascinating. As the economy suffered from the pandemic, rates naturally move lower because of the flight to quality and because of the Fed's asset buying program. But the NASDAQ also rallied aggressively because the market sensed a massive economic change that would ultimately depend heavily on technology. Think work from home. Now, this relationship of ultra low rates and a buoyant NASDAQ lasted for the first three months of the pandemic. And then as rates started to rise, so did the NASDAQ. But during that period, the NASDAQ underperformed the other indexes. Now, over the last week, the 10-year yields have moved higher from 1.27% to 1.37%, and the NASDAQ has hovered in a tight range near all-time highs. Now, if a trader believes that a move higher in rates above the technical resistance at 1.39 could negatively affect the NASDAQ long position, they could hedge that long with a buy of the CME Micro Treasury 10-year yield contract on a trade above 1.39. Now I'm talking about a stop in level. It's currently at 1.37. A trade above 1.39 stops you in. Now if a trader has stopped in at that price, they could target the May-June consolidation level around 1.6%. That trade would make $10 per basis point or $210 per one line. Now on the flip side, if a trader believes that that 1.39 level will not be breached and will hold, they could sell at 1.38 and target the January lows of 1% even. This trade would make $380.